and welcome to Heads Up. Today on the show, we're looking at the art of writing and I'm going to introduce you to two young writers, Simmer in Delhi and Suzanne in Bangalore, both of whom have recently made the transition from student to published author. First up, let's take a look at Simmer's story. Ruskin Bond once said, all glory comes from daring to begin. That's exactly what 17-year-old Simar Malhotra did. Bursting into literary circles and bookstores across the country with her debut novel, There is a Tide. Simmer's love for writing took her to the US when she was in class 11, where she enrolled herself at Yale University to take a Shakespeare and writing course. It was at Yale where the seeds of her book were sown. I used to always write, I used to journal in my diary, but then I used to write for myself. I never showed it to anybody or whatever. But then I went to Yale and over there I did this writing course and I didn't have a choice. I had to show it to my peers and my professor. So it was like the first time I had an audience. And my professor was super motivating. He was like, no, oh, you write so well, you must, you know, do something about it. And so, you know, he was very motivating and inspirational. And then I used to, like even in Yale when I was there, I used to diary and, you know, I wrote about the campus and the people and, you know, whatever I saw. And then when I got back home, you know, and I was flipping through it, I'm like, why not try and, you know, weave it into a story? Let's see where, you know, it goes. There is a Tide is a semi-fiction novel set across the landscape of the US and New Delhi that explores how the power to change the country lies in the youth. A work that has definitely made Simmer's grandmother very, very proud. कि ये चमत्कार कैसे हो गया जब मैं इसके पास जाती थी देखती थी तो ये मेरे को देख के नीचे मुंडी कर लेती थी और कहती थी दादी मैं सो रही हूं फिर मैं इसका सिर ऊपर करके इसको कुछ खाने को देती थी बस पता नहीं अकेले में और बैठ के क्या करा इसने जो उसका चमत्कार देखा तो मुझे बहुत बहुत खुशी हुई मैं कुछ कह नहीं सकती Being in class 11 is difficult, juggling homework, assignments and studying, especially if you're doing the rigorous IB program. So how did Simar manage it? Like in school, I got a lot of support uh, because I'm in a hostel and we're not allowed, like we have lights out and stuff like that. So you're not supposed to be working very late at night because otherwise you'll sleep off in school. <laughs> So, but then my wardens, they were, you know, I told them, I told one of my wardens that, you know, I think I'm working on something and I'm going to need more time. So she was very supportive. She was like, of course, you know, you can write in this room, which is free. Simar began writing her book in August 2013. By March, she felt that she had a story in place and told her parents that she had been writing what she thought was her first book. We were quite... Uh in for a surprise, like it was quite surprising for us because uh, we knew that, uh, you know, she used, she was very uh, fond of reading and she used to write small journals, you know. But we never uh, thought that, you know, uh, she would write a book, you know. <laughs> and one day she came to us that, uh, mom, rather, she came to uh, my wife and said that, I finished writing 60 pages, so what should I do now? So we were quite surprised and we said, yeah, why don't you come, come, come back to Delhi and we want to talk to you, what are you up to? She would start at 12 o'clock in the night and till 5 o'clock in the morning she would continue writing and at 5 a.m. Uh, she would send a message to Mama, Mama, I'm sleeping now 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we would get a message in the morning that she slept at 5 a.m., you know. So that's how she finished it. Influenced by author Meg Cabot, Simmer tells us that she motivated herself by telling herself to just be brave. Something she remembers her favorite author also once said. This one time somebody told me that either you can write or you can't write, you know. There is no midway. If you are able to write, then you can write. And if you can't write, 
then you can't write, you can't be a writer. But I think if you practice, you can be a good writer. You can. No, because there was a time that I used to hate the stuff that I used to write. And that was one of the key reasons why I thought that, oh, no, I'm not going to show it to anybody. But uh, I think practice can make perfect. And not that I'm perfect, but just, you know, it can, yeah, you get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Simmer promises to continue writing in the future and hopes one day to be an animal rights activist. Until then, watch this space. That was Kriti with young writer Simmer from Delhi, living every writer's dream. From here in Bangalore, I have another young author, Suzanne Sanghi, who published her first book when she was just 17. It's not easy earning your name as a writer at that young age. Here's how she did it. Suzanne Sanghi is studying communications at Mount Carmel College in Bangalore. Just like any other average 19-year-old, she has her pick of favorite things to do, whether it is reading, shopping, or just hanging out with her family and friends. But there is one thing that sets Suzanne apart from the crowd. She is living every aspiring writer's dream. At just 19, Suzanne is a published author. The strangest thing was when I started off writing, I had a completely different plot in my head. And then the actual story came out when I just wrote it. Like I did not have an actual plot when I wrote it and I just went on and one line led to another and yeah, so that's how I wrote the book. Suzanne had never imagined that her book would get published when she had started writing it right after her class 10 exams. She was 15 years old and had decided to pen a small plot revolving around what was still a growing force at the time, Facebook. She eventually fleshed out the idea. She spent sleepless nights every night for two years writing and rewriting the words. All the time not knowing that what she was creating would soon turn out to be a book. Actually, it took uh, a little while for me uh, to come to know that she, she was writing this book. Um, of course, she used to stay, uh, stay awake late night. And as parents, obviously, when a child stays awake late night, and you're in, curious to know what she was doing. And then one day she showed me, and she asked me to read what it is. And then, then I realized that she was into this project. And, but that time also she didn't really tell me that she's planning to bring out a book like that. But then I said, yeah, maybe this is very interesting. <laughs> What's the novel all about? Facebook Phantom revolves around teenager Sonali, her two best friends, and of course, Facebook. The story is a paranormal romance whose main character, Sonali, meets a mysterious stranger called Omidan on Facebook and falls in love with him. The plot of the book thickens when she and her friends learn that Omidan is not a real person but a ghost. The plot is basically about um, three friends and uh, the protagonist, uh, Sonali, she meets this stranger on Facebook and initially it's, you know, it's a very friendly chat and then it turns, it turns out to be really weird and um, she uh, finds this person really mysterious and he does not w turn out to be what she thinks he is. Um, three friends because um, that is actually kind of like my ideal idea of friendship of, of a group of three friends. So that's something I had in school as well. We were three friends. So that was also part of what inspired me to write about three friends in particular. Once Suzanne's friends read the draft she had written, they persuaded her to send it to the publishers. Still unsure, but once she got the go-ahead from her parents, she began mailing different publishers. Two turned her down while she hit gold with the third. Duckbill saw promise in her work. How easy was it to get published? Suzanne says it had a lot to do with luck as well as hard work. Once I finished the book, I was kind of very reluctant to actually even tell people that I'd written a book because I was only 16 and you know, I was like, nobody take me seriously. Then I, um, I gave my script to two friends and they were like, they were really uh, excited about it. And then they told me to send it to a couple of publishers and the third publisher accepted it. And it was sort of a huge surprise for me. But then, yeah, so that's how it went about. Suzanne Sanghi's Facebook phantom has reached out to most major stores across the country. It has shipped over 2,200 copies so far and retails at Rs 199. 
So those were the stories of Simmer and Suzanne, and we're now joined by their publishers. With me is Dipakar Ghosh from Rupa Publications and Shayoni Basu from Duckbill. Um, from the point of view of a publishing house, what makes you sign on a young writer? Is there a bit of risk or wariness that you have before you take them on because they're young? Well, well um, I don't think there's any difference really. It all depends on the story, on the manuscript that they've set, set in. And in a sense, the parameters for judgment are exactly as they would be for a manuscript written by an older person. It has to be a good story, it has to have compelling characters, the writing must draw us in. So in that sense, the standards are absolutely the same. And um, in terms of risk, no, not really. Okay. In fact, if anything else, uh, one is always guaranteed a little bit of publicity if the mm -hmm. author is young. young. Yeah, for sure, makes sense. And what sort of help uh, does a publishing house give to a young writer? They come in with the manuscript. And if you take us through a bit of the process, what sort of guidance would you give them? See, uh, see the guidance thing is uh, uh, something which, um, you know, there's not too much hand holding. Mm -hmm. We, we, uh, as publishing houses, we, we have, we are in the business of selling books, right? So, um, whether it's it's a uh, it's a book by uh, someone who's who's young and someone who, so the kind of time we invest would depend on the quality of the manuscript. If if the uh, uh, if the if the book is something which uh, would need some careful intervention to enhance its appeal, okay. we would definitely do that. Okay. Irre irrespective of whether it's a uh, what, what the age of the person is. So essentially that. Again, when it comes to a manuscript which has been accepted, it's exactly the yeah. same as an adult author. There, it's, uh, there is no mentoring involved. Obviously, once we have accepted the manuscript, it means that it is good enough for publication and whatever changes or any restructuring which needs to be done is exactly the same as with an older author. What's one thing, one yeah. thing I would add there is um, in dealing with, uh, as, as editors, the way we deal with them, actually it's much easier to deal with the younger authors because they're more receptive to our ideas. Oh, yeah, the yeah. more <laughs> set you are in your ways, yeah. it's really, there are arguments which kind of, you know, there are authors who would want to kill me after that argument. Yeah. So, you know, you don't really don't have those kind of arguments <laughs> with younger authors. Yeah. No, no, so I that's a that's, huge plus. I think, I think that's no younger author. Um, one of the younger authors I've edited was fairly fixed in her ideas. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And, and often, go both, both ways, if they're like teenagers, yeah. they can be so, like, no, this is definitely my yeah. story. I'm not going yeah, so, to budget change. So I think it's personality. I don't yeah. think age has very so much somehow, to do somehow, with somehow it. Somehow, uh, I've seen the uh, large majority of, of people, they're more receptive to the, this thing because something which is a new ad. Especially the published ones. My God, the older ones published. <laughs> ah. What would be your tips to young writers or people who just enjoy writing? What should they be doing before they approach a publishing house? Write. <laughs> Reread it. Mm -hmm. Write some more. Let it sit for three months. See, writing has to be for the pleasure of writing. Mm -hmm. I think way too many people are now writing with an eye to getting published. Yeah. Um, and possibly CV value, which is really mm -hmm. not a good reason to write. And it almost always shows in your is writing. Is it easy to differentiate between those people once they come to you? When you read, when you do read a manuscript and think that if somebody really cared about their writing, they wouldn't have sent this in. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't think even the greatest writers get it right at first attempt. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I mean, this is again equally applicable to younger authors and older authors, mm -hmm. that when you write something, write it, let it sit, work on it, make sure that it's the best that you can do before you send it to a publisher. Mm -hmm. What about you? What would be your tips? Uh, I, um, like Shani is saying, you know, it's something which um, uh, you, let, you need to kind of let the thing simmer. You need to also get uh, feedback from uh, people close to you, not very close to you because mm -hmm. they're not always objective. Yeah. So you need to get uh, uh, really um, uh, get some uh, advice from, from if not, if not people in the in the profession, then at least people who are in related fields. To show people so, your writing. Like exactly. That. So you know, so that you you get some feedback and 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 develop the develop the book, and you know there are no shortcuts to success. So you know keep that in mind. Yeah. So anything that you write, anything that you want to convey, keep the reader in mind. Don't focus on yourself. Keep the reader in mind. Take the reader along in that journey. Mm -hmm. That is very important. That is the key. 
if you try and tell your story from your perspective without thinking of the reader you're going to lose the reader the the, the publisher is going to likely reject it mm -hmm. so you should keep the reader in mind make it interesting uh, why should a reader read your book why should because there are thousands of books getting published every single month so you know why should anyone pick up your book unless you have an interesting story to tell mm -hmm. and and your and be individual don't try and copy someone else mm -hmm. and drone uh, uh, you know because don't try and pull a fast one on publishers mm. they will figure it out yeah. if you have if you have taken if you have okay fine so getting inspired by someone is fine but don't don't try and plagiarize because that is something which publishers will not tolerate yeah. so you know try and be creative yeah. be original so whatever you come up with let that be your your uh, let that be how you getting judged mm -hmm. so i think i think uh, essentially that i think uh, one of the big advantages which are which younger writers tend to have is great intensity of emotion mm -hmm. now it's from something you said that the intensity of emotion needs to then be channelized in a proper way you need a certain amount of detachment for a good story to happen mm -hmm. so if a younger author can balance that intensity with structuring and plot then i think you have the makings of a very successful book okay i think those are some valuable tips from simmer and suzanne's publishers do keep those in mind we're going to slip into a short break but don't go away because we have lots more on the other side <laughs>